Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Mother appeals for help in locating bodies of missing children seen in social media video. Curfew imposed in sections of St. Elizabeth. And later in sports, Issa yet to decide on trophy presentation for Manning Cup champions. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. The mother of two Westmoreland siblings who are believed to have been killed over lottery scamming activities is appealing to the public to assist in locating their bodies. Stephanie Edwards is confident that the bodies being buried in a shallow grave that was seen in a viral video are those of her children, 22-year-old Kenesha Moody and 20-year-old Carrick Moody. According to the official missing report filed with the police, the siblings were last seen about 7.15 on the morning of December 8, leaving a cook shop in Grange Hill, Westmoreland. Ms. Edwards, who says she has been numb since watching the video, recalled that Friday was the last time she heard from her son when he called to say she was to collect money at a shop. One $10,000 out there because they leave it there. So when he said that to me, I said to him, say, so one of the him say then they outta green jail. Them outta green jail. So me say hey, so one I do a green jail so so early. In said to me say I something them I go pick up one package. So them I go turn right now. So that was it. A 48-hour curfew was imposed in sections of a Goshen community in St. Elizabeth beginning Saturday evening. Several residents are happy about the increased police presence following a series of criminal incidents in the past week. Romarda Lyons has that story. Police officers checking vehicles, individuals being searched, and several establishments closed. Yes, ma'am. it? That was Goshen in St. Elizabeth Sunday, as a 48-hour curfew starting Saturday at 6 p.m. was imposed in sections of the community. Some residents have welcomed the measure. We can't get your open business place still, so we can't make no money. That's my problem still, but otherwise, my curfew will run here, man. If you have money, I need no fist up now. Then we extend it. Too much of this thing, I'm going to Too much of this thing right now. You understand? Can't so, manage them why. You know what I mean? Come here, sit down my yard for my yard to walk. So you know what I mean? Another resident, not in agreement, says he and others were caught off guard. The curfew can allow people that the police can investigate and do their work. But in the idea, people need to get things. People need food. And everybody will expect this thing because this comes sudden. We don't get the one from yesterday. We just get it this morning. Meanwhile, the police say a number of residents expressed concern over the crime situation in the community. As a result, We are here in the community to explain to them the nature of the curfew. They, we're asking them to cooperate with the commanders on the ground and the officers who will likely check them, uh, conduct searches of vehicles. And so there's an increased presence of police in the Goshen area. But Goshen isn't the only area being targeted. There's also some operational activities conducting um, in surrounding areas. And again, we're asking the citizens to cooperate with the police, the security forces that are here, and to share any information that they may have on the recent incidents that took place in the division. As at December 2, 29 murders and 32 shootings were recorded in St. Elizabeth. Romarda Lyons, TVJ News. And as crime and violence continue to affect several communities, the extension of a psychological first aid program in Westmoreland is expected to help residents of that parish. More than two dozen community members who graduated from the program will now seek to help persons affected by violent crimes. Herman Green has the story. With robberies and gang violence wreaking havoc in sections of Westmoreland, stakeholders are hoping that the Psychological First Aid PFA program will help break the cycle of violence in the parish. 26 persons graduated from the course and are expected to immediately provide their assistance to crime victims. The PFA training, a significant pillar within the citizens' security plan, represents a major stride toward breaking the cycle of violence. The graduates of this program have been equipped 
not only to identify those in need, but also to listen. Remember the L's? Yes. To listen, to support, and connect individuals with essential services, thereby contributing significantly to the overall cost, overall goal of creating safer communities. According to the JCF Serious Crimes Report, there have been 110 murders from as many shootings in that parish up to December 2 this year. The PFA graduates will be deployed in some 20 volatile communities, including where these killings have occurred. Namely, Savile Lamar, Cook Street, Seton Crescent, Harmony Town, Russia, um, Devonland, New Market Oval, Frome, George's Plain, Petersville, Petersfield, Grange Hill, and Farm Pen, as well as the communities within the zones of special operation, the Zozos. The program, which was developed by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, was adjusted by the European Union Technical Assistance Team to fit the Jamaican crime situation. The Westmoreland Group is the second cohort as 20 participants were trained last year and deployed in St. James and Hanover. President of the Westmoreland Chamber of Commerce, Moses Chaibar, says the business community welcomes the initiative. What we're seeing now, especially with crime and violence, you guys are needed. There's a lot of stress right now being experienced by so many people. When is that crime? It is something else. So again, I say to you that it is a huge task ahead of you. Herman Green, TVJ News. Elated. That's how residents of Williams Field and St. Catherine feel after seeing portable water in their pipes. It comes following advocacy, which included a petition with more than 100 signees to bringing attention to their situation. More on the support from Karen Simpson. It was joy unspeakable for residents of Williams Field District in the northeastern section of St. Catherine. After eight years, the more than 200 residents can now enjoy a consistent flow of water in their pipes. We are very, very grateful to see this. We are happy because it seems like we are going backward instead of forward, but we are happy to see that we are getting water for Christmas. I was so glad. I, even, I called my mother and said, Mama, you realize that we're going to get water? Water is in the pipe. My mother is 83 years old and she did not believe she would live to see water come in the pipe again. To be honest, it don't reach me as it. But I know by the help of God and by the counselor, we will get water to. The residents say they are relieved as they have been purchasing water for the past eight years. Roger Curlew is counselor for the Mount Industry Division. The community really had a, had a few years of setback. Over 20 lengths of the galvanized pipes were stolen and as a result the, the community had a setback because of the, the, the amount of finances that you know was actually needed to get by the system up and running. But what I did as a counselor for the area, I also invested through a location over half a million dollars in the system for the, the, the minor water supplies um, department to really come into the area and to start rehabilitating. Mr. Curlew says by next week, the entire community will have water. He adds that when phase two of the project is completed, more communities will benefit from the upgraded water supply. In phase two of the, the, this project, Residents living along um, Gobe Road and also Herewood community will benefit from this. We're going to be running some lines into Herewood and um, Gobe Road so those residents can get um, access to potable water because there's a serious water issue over in Herewood also. In the meantime, the councillor says he has met with the police along with members of the Citizen Association and has encouraged them to form a neighborhood watch program and to be more vigilant to prevent theft of the newly installed PVC pipes. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News. Stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Scores of commuters in Port Mary St. Mary were left stranded this morning as minibus operators withdrew their services over what they describe as the unfair practice of taxi operators. They say the taxi operators have been taking over their route, leaving them to wait hours to load their buses. They are calling on the authorities to address the issue. Oh, 
want a fair balance at the table. You can't let up people on the road for a run for our route where you run contrary and we can't do it. Because if we come off of our route and run for the next route, record will take you up and make the bus man them or the transport man them and ensure that we get take away. You can't get bus route a bus route. Car route a car route, brother. You can't act so. And injustice is this. You give the bus park and the man them are you. The same taxi man them and get load before the bus man them. What kind of thing is that? It's unfair for us to appear the road license from Portmore to Hochi and carry it a comfortable load. And we need justice. Now the operators resumed their services shortly after a meeting with Transport Authority representatives who advised them of a meeting to be held tomorrow to voice their issues. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Cygnus Credit Investments says its recent preference share offer was oversubscribed. The company says, however, that it has extended the offer as it seeks to upsize to take advantage of all subscriptions. Cygnus Credit Investments' preference share offer, which was to close on December 6, is now set to close on Friday, December 15. The company is looking to bring in up to 20 million US and 800 million Jamaican dollars across three classes of preference shares. Cygnus says the funds will be used to expand its private credit portfolio, scale up the business and achieve its strategic goals. In international business, the chief executive of US chip maker NVIDIA says the company will expand its partnership with Vietnam's top tech firms and support the country in training talent for developing artificial intelligence and digital infrastructure. NVIDIA, which has already invested $250 million in Vietnam, has so far partnered with leading tech companies to deploy AI in the cloud, automotive and healthcare industries. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Herman Green. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, President of Guyana, Dr. Mohamed Irfanali, says he will not deviate from the position that the only way to settle Guyana's territorial dispute with Venezuela is at the International Court of Justice, ICJ. He made the statement following announcement that he will meet with Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro in St. Vincent and the Grenadines on December 14 for face-to-face -face talks aimed at reducing tensions between both nations. He says he expects that good sense will prevail following the talks and Venezuela will refrain from issuing threats and taking steps that have potential to destabilize peace in the region. On the international scene, Hamas has threatened that not a single hostage will be allowed to leave Gaza alive unless its demands for a prison exchange are met. But Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says dozens of Hamas militants have surrendered. He described the situation as the beginning of the end for the group. Israel has ordered civilians to flee the center of Khan Yunus. And voter turnout plunged below 30% in Hong Kong's first district council elections since new rules introduced under Beijing's guidance effectively shut out all pro-democracy candidates, setting a new record low since the former British colony returned to Chinese rule in 1997. According to official data on Monday, 27.5% of the city's 4.3 million registered voters cast ballots in Sunday's polls, significantly less than the record 71.2% who participated in the last elections held at the height of the anti-government protests in 2019. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Kerry and Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports report.